Welcome to the Virtual Pathfinder channel. We will take a closer look at important aspects when choosing a tripod. If you're interested in photography, lenses and camera equipment, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'm interested to hear your opinion about tripods. Please write what you think about it in the comment section below. This video is about important issues to think about when selecting a tripod. By avoiding mistakes, money can be saved and used for other camera equipment. I have divided the tripods in three price categories and also in three sizes in order to evaluate each type of tripod. The price categories are low-end, mid-segment and high-end. There are of course other parameters that need to be looked at, such as flexibility, portability and overall quality. First I will look at the various areas of use for a tripod that is important in order to determine which specifications are needed. I will then have a look at tripods in each category and comment on them. Before I summarize my conclusions about the various tripods I will look at monopods, mini tripods and alternatives to mini tripods. Let's start with the user requirements. In order to decide which tripod to buy, it's necessary to consider how heavy payload it should carry and also stability requirements. For instance, if the tripod is to be used for extremely light equipment, such as smartphones, then there is no point spending money on an expensive full-size tripod. On the other hand, if the tripod will be used to carry heavier load, such as telescopes, then the mid-segment or high-end full-size tripod is the best way to go. In case of daytime long exposures using neutral density filters or long exposure astrophotography it's very important the tripod is completely stable and that the tripod head holds the camera or telescope perfectly fixed. For example, for lightweight camera or smartphone a mini tripod is probably okay. For medium sized cameras a small or full size tripod with good stability is okay. For heavy cameras or telescopes, a full-size tripod with good stability is necessary, especially for long exposure photography. The main parameters to consider are the weight and size of the tripod, which determine the portability of it. If the tripod is to be carried around in the field a lot, then portability is a requirement. Of course, the tripod has to be able to handle the payload for the kind of photography it will be used for. It also needs to meet the requirements of stability for that task. A good tripod may also have flexible configuration for macro photography or other specialized areas of use. Even if a tripod fulfills all requirements, it also needs to have sufficient quality to last for a long time. The build quality as well as the choice of materials determine the product lifetime. That may also depend on how heavy use will be performed for professional use, especially frequent use with heavy equipment then a high-end tripod is the best way to go. I made a categorization of tripods in three price segments and three sizes. It is summarized in this table. The rows show the price segment, which usually is an indicator of quality, and the columns show the tripod sizes, which are divided in three categories, full size, small and mini tripods. As an example of prices for a full frame size tripod, the low end product cost about 30 US dollars or euro, the mid segment about 100 US dollars or euro, and the high end over 200 US dollars or euro. In this video we will have a look at six tripods in the most common categories shown in this table. The number six down to the right is it's not a tripod, rather an alternative to a mini tripod, which I will get back to later. First I will briefly mention the high-end tripods, which are more or less professional use tripods. They are typically very solid, made of sturdy materials and have good build quality. The specifications allow all kinds of use with flexibility and can handle heavy payload with stability. For commercial use it is best to aim for high quality. In this video I will not say much more than that. It is more critical to make the right decision when the choice is between the mid segment and the low end segment. So my advice for users with big budget or professional users is to aim for products in the high end segment. For other users who need to get the best value for the money, the following part of this video will be useful. The mid-segment tripods are not much different from the high-end tripods. There are some choice of materials which makes the product not top level. The material that can make the difference is plastic. 
I have no problem with some parts being made of plastic as long as those parts are not put under constant pressure by the payload or by frequent mechanical wear and tear. For some purposes plastic can be very good. For instance, good camera lenses may have several plastic parts, but those parts usually don't carry heavy loads or get worn down. Tripods are different, they carry a heavy load and may get some rough handling, which makes it more important to have the right materials and good build quality in order to make it last sufficiently long time. My basic requirement is that no plastic parts should be pressured by the payload on the tripod. In this video there are three examples of mid-segment tripods, a full size, a small and a mini. The full size tripod in this video is very stable. It is slightly heavy and does not include a tripod head. There is just a plate with a quarter inch screw. A tripod head can be purchased separately and attached to that screw. That allows a lot of flexibility since there are many types of tripod heads. This tripod also has a lot of flexibility to attach the camera to the center column below the top of the tripod or set the tripod legs in a very wide angle to make it lower and much more stable. The center column can also be tilted at various angles which can be useful for macro photography or other specialized photography. The small tripod has similar characteristics as the full-size tripod, but it includes a three-axis tripod head which can be removed. Then any tripod head can be attached to the screw at the top, which is good. There is flexibility to attach the camera under the tripod and to increase the angles of the legs. The tripod weighs about half the weight of the full-size tripod and it can carry less than half the load. It is typically a good solution if portability is important when traveling or for field usage. The mini tripod in this example is a small fixed tripod. It fits in a typical small camera bag but has much less flexibility than a normal tripod. The angle of the legs has two positions and the legs can be extended to two lengths. The tripod head is a ball head which is a fixed solution. It's possible to attach a small tripod head to the screw on this tripod head, but the center of gravity may become too high for the short legs of the tripod. It is almost pocket size, but with much limitations. A more flexible solution is the small version of Gorillapod, which has more flexible legs. I would categorize both this tripod and the Gorillapod as mid-segment mini tripods, and these are a bit expensive for what they do. There are a few alternatives to these, which I will get back to later. The low-end tripods are very cheap, and there are lots of brands with very similar products, which may come from the same factory. They have many plastic parts, and often these parts carry the payload, which makes them flimsy. If a normal size camera is attached to a typical cheap tripod, it will not be very stable. Of course, a person who always used fast shutter speed and seldom outdoors in windy conditions, it may work. But there is also the quality aspect, as well as the lack of flexibility. Often, the specified maximum payload is a lot lower than for the mid-segment tripods. I have three examples, a full size, a small and a kind of mini alternative to tripod. The full size tripod in this example is typical for the segment. I would say the main weakness of it is the tripod head, which is made of plastic. 
and it's not very stable. One interesting thing to note is that although the legs are not completely stable, they are still quite okay. However, the tripod head ruins the stability completely. And worst of all, it cannot be removed or replaced. It is fixed to the tripod. I have tried to remove it, but it wasn't possible. If this product was sold without any tripod head, just with a screw, as in the case of the mid-segment tripod, then a good tripod head could make the best out of the situation, so less would be more. Since the legs are lightweight and made of thin aluminum, there are three supports between the center column and each leg to stabilize the tripod. I actually like that design and even would like to see it on more expensive tripods, although it's less necessary for those. The stabilizing parts remind me of the ultra-stable astronomy tripods. Still, the mid-segment tripods are more stable because of the build quality as well as the materials used. But this low-end tripod would not be a bad product if the tripod head was possible to replace. However, that is not the situation. So if you have the slightest ambition as a photographer, forget about the low-end tripods and have a look at the mid-segment tripods instead. Here is my take on mini tripods and monopods. First about the monopods. A couple of years ago I bought a monopod which I thought would be a great idea for portability reasons. It is lightweight and can be extended from very short to long length. It didn't have a tripod head, so a simple ball head was needed to make it useful. But I found it very difficult to use. It didn't seem to give much more stability than just ordinary handheld camera. To test it, I tested a long focal length telephoto lens with and without the monopod. It was hard to shoot sharp images when using the monopod. There are still too many degrees of freedom. If a monopod should be efficient, it has to be either stuck into the ground or to have some sort of plate at the bottom that can be pressed to the ground in some way. My experience of monopods is that handheld camera is about as good as that. And as a side note I can mention I don't regret buying that monopod. It has been very useful as a walking stick when trekking in the mountains and recently I've used it as a counterweight bar for my telescope on an astronomy rig. The adjustable length and lightweight is very useful but for photography I never use it. The low-end small tripod is not very good as I mentioned earlier but there is actually one area where it may be useful and that is as an alternative to a mid-segment mini tripod. If this low-end small tripod has just one leg segment height then it becomes very stable and it has lots of flexibility compared to the more expensive mini tripods. The weight of it is not much more than the mini tripods either. Of course the plastic tripod head is bad, but mini tripods don't have top level tripod heads either. So for light cameras or smartphones, a small low end tripod may actually be an alternative to the mini tripods. The price is about half the price of a mid segment mini tripod. As a last alternative to mini tripods, I want to mention a solution using a super clamp with a double ball head which can be screwed onto a firm object in the surroundings, indoors or outdoors. Once the super clamp is attached to a fence or a tree branch, the camera can be set in a fixed position using the ball head. That of course limits the positioning of the camera, while on the other hand offering a pocket size lightweight solution at a very low price. The super clamp with double ball head can be used for a lot of things such as holding smartphones, LED lights, small cameras, microphones or to stabilize tripods. I have found many areas of use for this product. It is not a perfect substitute for a tripod, but in some situations it may be good enough.
so I summarize my conclusions about tripods. It is always a good idea to think about how the tripod will be used, for what purpose, not only today but also in the future. Good equipment stays with you for decades and although the price is higher for quality equipment, that is one time cost. So my advice is to look for specifications above what you need today and spend some extra money to avoid low quality. Not only does the quality equipment have longer product life, but those products are usually more stable and nice to use, which can be enjoyed from day one. The main thing to look at is build quality and materials. Avoid any product that has plastic parts carrying the payload. That is a very bad idea since it reduces stability and usually breaks after a while. At least one should be able to replace the tripod head if it is included. There should be a plate with a screw to attach any tripod head. Mini tripods, I think, is a very special case. It may be worth going up one size and have a look at the low end segment. To me the monopod didn't contribute much to stability. Shake is reduced, but still there are three degrees of freedom for rotations. Someone may disagree, but this is my experience of the monopods. A lightweight tripod is a so much better idea, since it can be used for a variety of tasks and it's rock solid as long as the maximum specified payload is not exceeded. Another minimalistic alternative to mini tripod is a double ball head super clamp, which can be used to attach a camera to any firm object in the surroundings, as long as it has a diameter up to about 50 millimeters. Here are some approximate prices and maximum payload specifications. There are many products on the market which have similar specifications and prices. That was all for now. If you want more information about photography equipment, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I will take a look at some mid-segment tripods later, but before that I will give an overview of various tripod heads in my next video. Until then I wish you success in photography.